Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, another Stephen Yana chat. And uh, it's great for you to be back again, Yanka. I know it takes time sometimes because there's a lot of research that you're doing all the time. Mm -hmm. And this time we had to coordinate your research, my research together on this uh, video with Yitzhak Shapira. And uh, uh, tell the people a little bit about what we're going to be discussing here. Well, we will be dissecting his message, the tzitzit of Messiah and the tzitzit of Israel. Now, it might look like we are picking all the time on Isaac Shapira, and we really don't want to do that. Why is it important, though, for this particular message to be dissected again and, and brought up and explained? Is because Isaac Shapira is on a bridge with a lot of Christian denominations and Christian pastors or pastors who are not necessarily called Christian, like Mark Bilt, I guess he doesn't consider himself Christian. Uh, a lot of messianic ministers. Messianic but ministers. You have all different walks of life. You have evangelicals, etc., that, that are crossing. Crossing this on path. a bridge. Right, exactly. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, Mark Bilt invites him to his church. He preaches to his church. And then Mark Bilt is invited to Christian channels as a prophecy expert and then of course Christians on Christian channels see him so they go check out his channel and on his channel they see it's like Shapira and of course this is a false gospel which I call a false gospel unknown to the apostles that have been uh, preached by a Jewish man Steve by a Jewish right. man who <clears throat> comes across or who introduces himself as a believer in Yeshua and yeah. <clears throat> that's what fools a lot of people because he will introduce himself oh I'm a messianic Jew I'm a believer in the Messiah Yeshua he will say he believes the Brit Kadasha the New Testament and everybody's so excited but now let's listen what he says and there is a several very dangerous signs when we say in English red flags and um, of course, he's planting seeds that seeds of the false gospel, seeds unknown to the apostles. Right. <clears throat> and you know, Jude warned, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Jude warned the church even back during uh, the days of the apostles that there were many uh, false apostles that had come into the church already. And I, for a while, was trying to give more credit. Uh, to Yitzhak Shapira that, you know, he was just sincere, sincere but going in the wrong direction. Uh, this video here, though, let me know that one, A, he's listening to what we have to say, right. but two, he's only looking at a way to try to, um, to better his position and not heeding the information, but what can he do uh, to disprove that information and then lead the, the body of Christ underneath the Talmudic rabbis. Right, but it's not about us. Or well, he, It literally doesn't matter what he thinks of us, but problem is he's bringing in false gospel. And like you said, he's basically preaching Judaism to the Christian churches and calling Christians out of the Christian church. Right. Okay, and he is saying to Christians on several of his videos, which we won't even bring on today, but he's saying to Christians that they're not the saints. In, in other words, right. for right. 2000 years, Christian people who believe in Christ, Jesus Christ put their faith in him. Okay, and he's telling them, oh, you are not the saints. He's saying they're not the bride. They're not the bride, but they're just guests or they're just garment of a Jews. They're just garment of Jews. And then they have to grab the tzitzit of a literal Jewish man yeah. in order to be saved or to make it. He also tells Christian people they are not saved. He says nobody is saved and he's putting the redemption to the future. Now, before we play this as a proof that he's actually speaking of redemption as some event that will happen in the future, let's uh, remind ourselves that when Jesus was on the cross, he said what? It is finished. finished. So the redemption is finished, Steve. All we have to do is grab hold of Jesus Christ, believe on him as the Messiah. Whether you are a Jew, Gentile, any race, any color, any tribe, any nation, any tongue, it really doesn't matter. 
because we are all one in him and the redemption of your soul is finished it's done he has done his job what he came to do to be god in flesh among us and uh Ritzak shapira is basically saying nobody is saved yet the salvation is corporal it's a corporate event and uh, we have to grab as gentiles we have to grab hold of a jewish man hey for me it's easy you are the jew i'm only half jew considered gentile by actual rabbis right so i can just grab hold of your tzitzit and i'm good huh but anyway uh <laughs> so i'm good guys i'm good <laughs> according to shapira's uh teaching uh, but anyway, he puts the redemption in a future. So let's see. Um, he actually teaches that false and we're gonna gospel. We're going to be starting at what minute? Five right twelve. Five twelve, and mm -hmm. going to how far? I don't know. Just and let's play. Will return us to this land. Why did he return us to the land? Because the Geula, the redemption of the house of Israel, is right upon us. Notice that the text used the words Bayamim Ahem. Let me explain this to you. When the prophets of Israel speak about the times nearing to the coming of the Messiah, they use two terms, Bayamim Ahem or Bayom Ahu. They refer to the same thing in those days, in the days that we call Acharit Ayamim, the latter days, the end of the days. Those, those are the days of the Messiah. Messiah. The context of Zechariah chapter okay, 8. Okay, Steve, so I have a question for you. Question for you as a Jew. Okay, is he correct? Does these words refer to the future as a context of the last days now? that is at times of those days meaning these days now in the context of what he just said no bayamim chahem or bayahim chachama would probably be more accurate if he wanted to try to use that but let me just kind of give you some examples here and uh, we have a lot of different information here so trying to find everything that I've, I've actually placed in here is going to be a little bit tough there let me just see here here we go we have right here this is in joel chapter 3 mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to come to that one in just a moment also in zechariah and he's going to go to zechariah in just a moment uh, from zechariah chapter 8 verse 23 as you can see here if you're looking on your screen there this is by yamin hechama all right, and that's typically a little bit more when you see something referring to that latter days uh, from Zechariah chapter 8, uh, uh, verse 23. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass, right? And so he's wanting you to see that that's at the end of days, right? But then we could also find over in Genesis, for example, where he says, Bayamim Haham, there it is, right there, Bayamim Haham, and that's referring to the Nephilim were in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and, and they bore to them uh, children to them. That, Yanka, was actually before the flood. Right. Uh, so, But he might argue, well, wait a minute, but that was the end of days for them. But he's not applying it like that. And so then in that case, let's then take a look then in the book of Exodus. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking here at Exodus chapter 2. You can see up in your upper right hand corner there, verse 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown up. Be'yamim chahem. Oh, Once wow. Once again. So Same words. Does applied. that mean when Moses grows up, he's at the end of his days? I'm not really sure. But uh, no, Joel, though, that's, that's the one that I do like, though, because... And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Be'yamim ha Now, when you got it like that with the mem uh, he, that tends to, to, to apply to the latter days, but it's speaking about the latter days of the coming of the Messiah. Now, I don't think that it really means specifically like that, but what I see consistently, if you're looking at those days in the scripture, when you have it uh, in, written like this, it seems to apply to the time of the coming of the Messiah as a general, general term. I can't say it's absolute, but what he's saying and, and what, he, what he's talking about is completely wrong. Exactly, because uh, basically this word does not apply to these days now, doesn't but it apply, was right. applying to the days of Messiah when he was coming and the prophets were prophesying about him coming to 
Israel to the Judean land right. to Jerusalem at his first coming and uh, when all these uh, 12 apostles believed on him he chose the 12 apostles and then day of Pentecost when a lot of scriptures were fulfilled right, right. and right. the end of days a lot of time applied to the 70 AD which was basically not end of days but end of the certain era or temple cult end of the temple cult in Jerusalem uh, that Pharisees ran at that time. Exactly. It was actually the end of the it was the end of the days of the Levitical law. End of the days of for because the old law and a time of the for the new covenant. New covenant. The, the Melchizedek covenant because and this right. is what we find even in the Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they knew that there would be a new covenant, a Barit Chadashah. They actually write that in their writings there. And so when I look at that in, in those days or the end of days there, that's the way I would take that in my own way of thinking. Because every time we see the prophets speak about the last days, like Job, Job for example, he said, uh, and I'm just paraphrasing, uh, you know, that uh, I shall see him for myself. My eyes, not another, shall see him for myself. For I know my Redeemer liveth, and on the last days, at the last days, see, he says it that way, I shall stand upon the earth and I shall see him. Mm -hmm. All right, what was he talking about? He's talking about the resurrection. That happened back then. That's right. And when, that was during Christ's time because right. he came up in the resurrection. So his eyes, not another, when he was resurrected, his own eyes were able to behold him. Yeah, because and we know that on the third day when he rose, the graves have opened a lot of saints that That's right. were sleeping and they were even visible for many people and they resurrected and went to heaven with yes. Jesus. So that's what Job was referring to. Exactly. So he's basically applying everything to the future. It's simply very convenient and we will see why. Because he's teaching pure Judaism, Stephen. As we go on, we will explain that. Well, let's play him more because I want to... Um, same place, correct? Yes, same place. Continue. When the God of Israel clearly provide a roadmap for the return of the Messiah. Number one, the Jewish people will return to the land. Okay, we let's, you know, let's talk mark. about that a little bit. The Jewish people will return to the land and he's putting a check mark there. Wow, that has already happened. We know that a lot of Jews live outside the land of Israel. They have not even entered their mind or thought to even go to Israel. They don't want to. There is a reason why. There is no good life in Israel, Steve. Nobody, right. No Jews want to go there. In fact, one of the reasons they're making anti-Semitism now, they're creating artificially the hatred of Jews or bringing it to, you know, uh, to the world like, oh, wow, there is growing anti-Semitism. They want to um, advertise for Jews Israel is a safe place for them. Even uh, the Rabbi Mitzrahi, when he's talking to his congregation, we will listen to him a little bit in a minute, when he's speaking to his congregations in, or in synagogues all over New York and all over the world, mm -hmm. he's saying, well, why don't we, you need to purchase apartments in Israel right now because anti-Semitism is rising, they hate us, and the best place will be to live in Israel. Okay, so this is what's, uh, what is happening. But other Jewish people, they did, was it really a uh, fulfillment of prophecy? And I know we used to believe that way, that it's true. Yes, we did. However, yeah. when you start thinking about it, a lot of Jews do not live in Israel. They have to be forced to go there. They don't want to. Even Yitzhak Shapira does not live there. He lives in Texas. United States. Why? Well, it's a beautiful land here, isn't it, Mr. Shapira? Uh, our constitution here, and it's just nicer to live in the United States. Um, I know that because I lived in Israel for a little bit, and believe me, it's not an easy life in Israel. No, it's not. And the thing is that a lot of uh, the government of Israel brought in a lot of scientists, Russian scientists, they needed to develop the nation, develop their technology for future mm -hmm. Kabbalah, because Kabbalah and technology is very, very connected. Yes, they are. And we will talk about this on our programs more now, as we are preparing these chats. But um, anyway, they brought in a lot of Russian, Steve, and they were not Jews by blood. 
they were not Jewish. Nobody in their family practiced Judaism. And most people have okay? no idea of these facts. Right, but they have no idea. So they brought these Russians in, in thousands, hundreds of thousands. They were not Jews, they were basically Goyim. You know, they were mm -hmm. just Gentiles, according to them, just Gentiles, according to him as well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they were brought in as if they were Jews because they needed these professional people, intelligence and all of this, you know, to, to kind of have in Israel. And that, now they intermarried with Israelis. They intermarried. So they have a lot of children that are not really Jewish. So is Israel full of Jews today? As we see Israel on the map, is that a Jewish nation there? No. no. There is a lot of Gentiles intermarried within the Jews and it's not. Now, this is Yana speaking now? No. They know it. Why don't you play Mitzrahi? He even said that to one of his Jewish synagogues. He knows this. All right. Okay. And this is an interesting rabbi to begin with. One of his students years ago had contacted me, Rabbi Misrahi, and they were listening to my program. They said a couple of us here are actually starting to believe in Yeshua as the Messiah. And would you please try to reach out to, to our own rabbi? Maybe he might believe. I thought that was very interesting. So, <laughs> so Mitzrahi, uh, he may not know it, but yeah. He does own, not like students. Christians at That's all. Right, he does. Or Jesus. Just okay. It's okay. a shame that we survive. There's not really not that much to do. There's not that much to do. Only 4% of the Russian Jews that came to Israel, million people are Jews. Today they published it. Even I was surprised. I always say that 80% are not Jewish. But now it's, 80, it's 84%, even more than what I said. Remember how they criticized me when I say that? Here, it's, it shows, they show you their own statistic. 4% only. 96% of the Russians are going. Okay. Soon they'll take over the country. Okay. And here's what's interesting when you bring this out to Yana. All right. And I don't say, because we know a lot of the Russians are Christians to begin with. Right. And, oh, he's talking about that. And that's why, a good why don't thing. you play? Let's, I let's mean, he's, play that. And then yeah, I, want to, he's, I want to speak about this too from a biblical standpoint. Yeah. But also, if they think they're so pure, from what are they doing? By, we'll, we'll go into the middle. So we don't, want to be, we, we don't want this to be Jewish state. We're all Christians. Are you going to tell us what to do? together with the Arab Christian, together with all the other Thailandi and Chinese and all the other one in Israel, they'll take over the country. This is a much dangerous thing. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, that is that really prophecy fulfilled, that they're in a land? It's not really true? Exactly. Now, let me, let me back up just a little bit, though. Scripturally speaking, and this is something that is spoken by Paul as well, he's only quoting from the Old Testament, Israel, though you be as the sand of the sea in number, yet only a remnant will return. Right. All right? So... Forget the modern state of Israel for a moment, right. because that's what we saw happen. And we'll go into this a little bit later. That's what we saw happen in the days of Yeshua. And I'm going to prove it, because I used to think that it was only that this was still a future fulfillment, that the house of Israel was still yet to come back. I totally miss that in the book of Acts. We'll go into it later. But the thing that I do want to point out right here is that we know that Many of the Russians, as he pointed out, are Christians. So therefore, I do not consider them of any kind of Nephilim bloodline or anything. Right. But let's just say, let's just say though, Israel, because they were warned not to intermarry when they went into Babylon, for example, and yet the priests and Levites did it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for the Russians that don't intermarry amongst the Jews because in Israel because they would be getting involved in a lot of this mixing of the bloodlines But the themselves. thing is they do intermarry I know, because I know now that their children are Israelis, you know, they brought them in in 1948, 1950s and 60s, a lot of Russian scientists and Russian people under law of return, under Aliyah, lying that they're Jews because they needed professionals. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. And now they're, you know, saying, oh, we are Jewish state, only Jews. Yet they're, like he says, like Mitrahi says, you know, that 84% eight, of them are he all Gentiles. Because I noticed he'd messed up in his math. He knew 4% were, were Jews. And then he said, 80, he said, he said, they used to, he said, I used to say 80%. And then he talked about 84, but I realized he messed up in his math. And then he corrected himself and said, no, 96% of them are Christians. But that, that's amazing. So where is the Shapira's fulfillment of prophecy then? Well, it's right? not, and it's not, I, it's I mean, not. I'm not only, to, uh, okay, there are a million uh, Russians, but listen, Russian language is number th three language in Israel. It's the third that most was, spoken language in Israel. That was how many were brought in, Yanka. Right. Now there's over two million Russians living in right. Israel. Exactly. And like you said, it's the third most spoken language in the country. Yes, uh, right after Arabic, it's Hebrew, Arabic, it, and, and Russian. As you pointed out to me one time, though, you said it was a better life for the Russians to come to Israel because they weren't under communism, at least. Uh, I mean, I realize Israel Israel's not really a democracy. Please don't get that illusion. Um, it's similar to a democracy, but it's not really a democracy because if it were a democracy, the Palestinian people would not be living uh, in in basically on the different camps. laws also right. different exactly. laws apply if you're a palestinian or if you are a gentile it's right. different laws we had a recent incident right? right exactly okay and then also marriage divorce uh, adoption laws they're all ran by rabbinical courts on the talmud the the state is on the talmud basically that's right it's a talmudic state that's exactly right so exactly but all these things are anyway let's move on another point Oh, before we go there, Steve, I think uh, the fulfillment of Jewish people returning to the land, didn't that fulfill at the time of Jesus? When yes. the whole house of Israel yes. was already in the land? Let's take a look at that. And I was actually alluding to that already when I was speaking about that a moment ago. And that's in, we can find that in the book of Acts. And so, I, yes, I do want to share that with our friends there because... When we look at the book of Acts, which has a lot to do with uh, the whole premise of what uh, Shapiro is going to be talking about in a little bit, but I won't go into all that right now. But it, when you look at this and we see on the day of Pentecost, when the Pentecost was fully come, and you know we, we knew that there were 120 uh, Jewish believers, they were Jews that were in the upper room, uh, and they were the ones that were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they came out, they were stammering with other lips. Uh, or, uh, actually, they were stuttering is what the scripture says. They weren't speaking in unknown tongues. They were just, they just, like, oh, and they didn't know what to say. The miracle came when Peter spoke in the Galilean language. And all these Judeans with their proselytes, mm -hmm. and he called them Judeans. Right, not Jews, really. You They're know, we are so Jews. used to They're today Judeans. to call them Jews. But its actual translation says Judeans, meaning... Someone who lives in Judea. And or they were actually, part in of this Hebrew. case, it was their ancestry. They mm -hmm. were connected to the land by ancestry. And I used to not realize that until I was really paying closer attention. Because it does say here, verses 8 to 11, where they were born. See, notice verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Where were they born? Perithians, Medes, Elamites, and it goes down to all these nations, Asia, Egypt, all these places, Rome, Jews and proselytes, or Judeans and proselytes. In other words, some were from uh, the land of Judea, as it was known back in those days there, and then the proselytes being the Gentiles, people they had converted to their, to, to their way of believing, right? And then you get down here to, I think, around verse 36 or 31, I believe it is, Nope, let me see a little further. 30, oh, right yeah, 36. 36. 36. This is when we find out that it wasn't just the Jewish nation, but those people that had came back were the house of Israel. Because wow. watch what he says. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So it refers to entire house of Israel that yes. is already there, that remnant. They, in other words, they had came back. So we actually see, as the scripture says, although Israel was be as the sand of the sea in number, mm -hmm. and Paul quotes this, right? Yet 
only a remnant would return. And that has fulfilled right there. We see that fulfillment. Now, if you look at Paul's writings on this, because see, Shapiro tries to put what Paul is saying as a future fulfillment. In other words, and there is some truth to what he says. All right, but not on not when it comes to this. Not he's trying to link Paul of, of Romans 11 to that of Zechariah. Paul is only talking about in Romans 11 that if they stay not in unbelief, they shall be grafted back into their tree. That doesn't mean they have to come back to the uh, to the state of Israel. Exactly. That just means they need to come into Christ That's to fulfill right. that prophecy. Yes. The coming to Israel where they would return home was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. The right. part where he says, uh, you know, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and then Israel can be regrafted in again, that's something that is being fulfilled all down through these years, even now, and no doubt maybe we'll still still we'll still see more. Well, Jews you know, in. that ministry one for Israel publishes a lot of interviews with the Jewish people who came from Jewish background from the Judaism and their parents practice yes. Judaism and they're coming to Jesus Christ and they're not afraid to speak the name of Jesus. Right, exactly. Okay. Isn't that interesting? That is. The Jewish people aren't afraid to say the name of Jesus, yes. but the Christians are. Right, the Christians Everything are saying you can't Yeshua. say it. You have to say Yeshua, Yehoshua, Yahshua. To be more correct, that that's Judaizing that happened now in Christian churches, which is completely false. But anyway, let's move to the third point of Yitzhak Shapira. Okay, what he in in Mark there? twelve forty four, he's speaking of the fulfillment of Zechariah, I believe, about the pure language. So let's talk about this a little bit. Okay, twelve forty four. Tell us that in the last days, when Messiah is here, he will return us to a single language, to Hebrew. Zephaniah chapter 3 said it. But here the nation are still in different tongues. This is exactly what it says when it used the word mikol leshonot. They speak different, different languages. They are still under the curse of the Tower of Babel. But the fact of the matter is that they return, 10 of them, is important. Why? Because a Jew wears 10, or 4, I should say, 4 garments, 4 tzitziot, 4 corners. That. Okay. We'll come back to this, his mathematics. He has uh, done some very interesting mathematics right here that we'll talk about. But... Um, Let's talk about fulfillment of Zephaniah. I apologize, it's not Zechariah, it's Zephaniah. Where he says that God will return to us one pure language. And he's referring to today's Hebrew spoken in the state of Israel as that language as a fulfillment of the prophecy. Now, Steve, is that a literal human language that Zephaniah refers to? Or do you think that it was fulfilled as a spiritual one pure language that they had at the time of Jesus, you know, Pentecost, you have already spoken, showed to us over here that they heard each one of them in their tongue, yep. that gospel. Exactly. And, and the funny thing is, I used to really believe that this was something still coming because I, I did focus more on... Uh, when it said they shall all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Thinking that it would be some kind of pure language that they would know how to be able to once again pronounce the name of Jehovah as we see with the sacred name movement. Oh, it's Jehovah, no Yahuwah. Uh, Yahuwah, Yahushua, Joshua. But the problem is, is, that still, you know, the thing, Yeshua. <laughs> even if that were the case, even that was not being fulfilled as Shapiro is claiming to be. But the word in Hebrew right there is not even the word pure. Okay, it's not a pure language or a pure tongue. It's just it's it's a it's something that's that's illuminated, uh, uh, and and so therefore, as I look at this now, and I'm going back and researching the scriptures to see what things have been fulfilled that I put in the future, uh, I'm also starting to see that this is another passage that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And the reason I say that, because notice how it does this, for then will I turn to the peoples, uh, let's, instead of saying pure, let's say 
uh, you know, a bright language or, you know, chosen. A, a chosen language that they all may be able to call upon the name of the Lord. Well, that is as you've as we talked about this quite extensively it is a doctrinal language in other words they come to one faith it is to bring the well it says to serve him with one consent exactly and we didn't have that with judaism we did not have this with the levitical law we only get this through christ and that's what we find in the book of acts it has so many of these pages open it makes it <laughs> difficult there to see that uh, but that's what they do. They come together. And, and the odd thing is, if you want to take the one language, they said here, we do, notice this, verse 11, chapter 2, we do hear them speak in our, to in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, let me just mention this. Because every time Yitzhak Shapira is using Zechariah 8 for that, right? That was Zephaniah. I know, but he's using Zechariah 8 to make his point. He always goes back to Zechariah 8, right? And in Zechariah 8, they also make this very interesting statement, Shamanu Elohim Im Ham. We have heard, again, and that word is in the future tense. It's in the second person plural, all right? And they're putting that in the future, and that's exactly what we see over here being fulfilled, again, in the book of Acts, uh, right there. See, we do hear them speak, you know, of course, in their own native tongue. So it's, it's another thing about that hearing. And I just think it's marvelous. I mean, there's so much, if you really examine Acts chapter 2, and you, took, you look at Zechariah, you look at Zephaniah as well, you'll see there is so much fulfilled just in the book of Acts chapter 2. That's amazing how all of these prophets are were fulfilled in this one event. Absolutely. You know, it's just amazing. But anyway, so it's not speaking of literal language spoken today in, in the state of Israel. No. First of all, today's modern Hebrew cannot be possibly the fulfillment even if we wanted to. Why don't we play for people this little history of Hebrew? That'll be great and I, I definitely have a comment on this one. Prado noted that the old Hebrew alphabet was the same as the Samaritan alphabet. He also pointed out that it is identical to the Phoenician alphabet. When we compare the letters of these three alphabets, we can see this similarity. This is the letter Bet in the Old Hebrew, the Samaritan, and the Phoenician. Note the close similarity of each of these letters. Also, note the similarities of the letter He in each of these alphabets. The 1831 edition of the Encyclopedia Americana also makes this connection between the Phoenician, Samaritan, and Hebrew alphabets. The Hebrew's written characters were the same as the Phoenicians, to which the letters of the Samaritan manuscripts approach the nearest. The let me let me just make. I would like to make a comment on this too, Yanka. This is really something interesting when they say this in here because. We interviewed, it's been a long time ago, uh, maybe a year or two ago, I interviewed one uh, scholar here on Israeli News Live, and he had shared with me his belief that Joseph was the one that created the Hebrew alphabet or the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet. Right. That we see very similar to the Samaritan text there. Uh, and I find it interesting. I don't know if you'll ever hear this message here. Because when I was doing the research in the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, we, I found in the, uh, it's called the Testament of Levi. Levi was writing a, 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 a about Joseph, his brother, and he said he was the one that gave us the, ability, the language and the ability to read. And so it would make sense why the, uh, the, the Samaritan, the Armenian, and the ancient Paleo-Hebrew alphabets are all the same, because it would have came from Joseph. And secondly, it's Phoenician. Phoenician, sorry, American and Phoenician. And another thing I thought is interesting because a lot of people will ask me, well, Steve, do you not believe that the Hebrew language was the language of creation? Mm -hmm. And my answer has always been no. 
and that blows them away whoa wait wait a minute it's not what do you mean it's not the, it's got to be the language of creation we put modern type of hebrew up on such a pedestal it's not even funny but it can't be and we know this for two reasons one when yeshua was dying on the cross he spoke in a language that no one there knew and they knew and they even had paleo hebrew and some of the dead sea scroll writing so they would have known at least a little bit about that language but no one knew anything that's about god's it. talking on that's that right cross. that's exactly right it yes. was it was a, it was a it was truly god speaking there and then secondly if it was the language of creation you should be able to speak and create and those things would create yes, exactly that's right it would still happen well you know in judaism which soon we will find out they actually believe steve that uh who keeps all this matrix that we live in the physical universe here together that's rabbis by doing mitzvot and studying hebrew torah they believe this in judaism mm -hmm. rabbis teach that okay they say that there were always enough rabbis on this earth to study Hebrew uh, Torah in, in the in purer languages, they say. So it keeps the elements together because if Jews didn't exist, if these rabbis didn't do that, didn't study Torah in Hebrew, the entire uh, universe would dissipate. It wouldn't exist. So they believe they actually keep things together. By, that's the belief in Judaism. I will actually prove it to you from a right. Dorin Dotan right. uh, video. But anyway, when it says, you know, in Zephaniah that they will have one consent, first of all, rabbis today don't even have one consent oh, because no. all they the do. Talmud, and know that. Talmud is only debates and various opinions of several rabbis, and some were accepted halakhically as a law. Some of their opinions are preferred and put in a halakha, the Jewish law, but they don't agree with one another. They have chaos. You know the saying that we have uh, the three opinions and two Jews? That's two right. Jews and three opinions. That's right. So there is no one consent speaking no. Hebrew. Okay. So that Zephaniah that Shapira speaks is not one pure language. Well, today's language in Israel um, it's not a literal human language, but it's the language of Christ that they heard in all of, of their, their tongue, in their own tongue, as Peter spoke, I believe. And That's they right. heard it in their own tongue. It was that pure language of Jesus, yes. of his gospel. Okay. And um, so anything else I wanted to say, and I know I did, and I forgot to make here. But fulfill, okay, Masorites, yes, another about this Hebrew. Isn't it Masorites, 1,000 years after Christ, when they created vowels and all these little dots, and they changed the language, the original language, the Paleo-Hebrew, the, the Masorites, the meanings? between two to 500 years after Christ is when the Masorites okay. begin to put in the, the Masoretic alphabet, or the, the dashes and the dots and things like right. that. This is how we got all of our vowel points placed into the Hebrew language. Didn't that change meanings? Yes, well, that was the problem for myself, and I've seen this over and over and over throughout the scriptures. They can take and change the vowel and totally change the meaning of right. what you're reading, which confuses the reader and literally causes them to create a doctrine of their own. Right, uh, which they did. We see this in Genesis, for right. example. In fact, I'd got a message from Sister Jen today about Genesis 3.16. Mm -hmm. And I know that Ar uh, Ar uh doesn't necessarily have the same meaning as what you see there in Genesis 3.16. It doesn't necessarily just mean greatly multiply. It has another meaning as well. Uh, Nephilim is another one. They use the vowel points differently, so you can they confuse the people. Even though the spelling is different, they use the vowel point to make it as if the spelling is one and the same. So how can that be one pure language and fulfillment of Zephaniah? Absolutely not. No. So that's just lie number three or two. I don't remember. Anyway, let's keep moving. Uh, let's talk about him saying that Israel is the son of God and then eventually he's going to move into a blasphemy saying that the Jewish man, like himself, is the same as the Messiah. They're one and the same. And then he will go into blasphemy saying 
and quoting, I believe, Exodus, that they are the chosen nation of priests, well, we, which we'll talk about that and bring right. very beautiful scriptures out from uh, Brit Hadesha, New Testament, the fulfillment of all of that. But then he will go into blasphemy, Steve, and say that they, the Jewish men, are the mediators between mm. Gentiles and God, which I think it's ultimate, that's just ultimate well, denial let, let of what know. Christ is. Right, it lets me know that Yitzhak Shapira does not know the New Testament Th like he should. That's exactly right, that he didn't grasp the true, real gospel as apostles preached, and that he's preaching totally right. different gospel that is not known, that was not known to apostles or Christians in 2000 years. Kind of reminds me of Jehovah's Witnesses. They will take you whatever agrees with their theory. Right, and they change scriptures to their doing. own exactly. theory instead of learning what the scriptures truly mean as Apostle Paul has explained to us. Exactly. And Apostle Peter, we'll talk about Apostle Peter. But anyway, so let's... Uh, what him, mark should I be at to be on uh, I think on it's 1421. 1421. Okay, yes. let's go ahead and go who is called the Son of God. And Israel is also the one who is called the Son, the Son of God, according to the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 22, 23. So who is the Son of God? Israel and the Messiah. This man that is being held to, in a literal meaning, in the literal context, can never mean Yeshua and have to be applied to the Jewish people. It is a simple understanding of subject-verb agreement of the text. It says, we are holding the garment of a Jewish man. By the way, all the commentators say, speak about Israel, all Jewish commentators, and all Christian commentators say, speak about the Messiah. The Christian commentators are wrong because they don't understand the subject-verb agreement. He says, we will walk with you, where the subject is, is the Jewish man. The subject is the Jewish man. The action is the verb is walking with you. The Hebrew word you here in the text is the word imchem. If it's spoken on a single, single entity of a Jew, the word would be imcha. But the word is not in a singular, the word, the word is in the plural. The word is imchem. Therefore, this verse apply to all the Jewish believers. And one could argue without any problem, since Yeshua is the master and he live inside the heart of a Jewish believer, that it's also apply to the Messiah of Israel. Because they are one in the same. <coughs> okay. This <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a I lot, to, right? There, there is so a much lot. to speak about this. But anyway, first of all, when he says that it can actually be applied, Zechariah can be applied to Jesus after all of that, you know, what he explained. At he can't the end, leave it out. He's afraid to leave right, it out. Right. It can be applied to Jesus, of course, because he lives in the heart of a Jewish believer. Well, how about if Jesus lives in the heart of a Gentile believer? That's what he denies. He denies that Jesus or Yeshua in Hebrew can live in the heart of a Gentile believer. And if Yeshua does live in the heart of a Gentile believer, does he or she really needs to grab a physical Jewish man for salvation? Okay, so yeah, yeah, he's yeah. basically claiming here that, that Jesus can live only in a heart of specific race. That's supremacism and, and completely different doctrine than apostles gave us. Then apostles made it very clear, very clear, that of any nation, any tongue, any race, there is neither Jew nor Greek in Christ. We are all one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can all grab that tzitzit of Jesus Christ, the Judean that was here as God in flesh. Right. Okay, but anyway, Steve, do you want to talk about a little bit? I know you're going I'm to do, make... I'm going to do a short video, right. short part on this, because yes. I am going to go into this separately and in far greater depth. So, yeah. But I do need to address it enough to where people don't lose this, all right? Let's first start off real quick about the Son of God. He makes Israel, because the Scripture says that Israel is his firstborn. 
all right there's nothing wrong with that all right but you have to understand the context and he uses the scripture out of Egypt I call my son most Jews will tell you right off the bat, bat that had nothing to do with Jesus all right because mm -hmm. they said Israel was caught it's only the apostles that really noticed that part all right but just a couple I'm only going to use two I'll go into this much deeper later if you look in the New Testament though why is it we see over and over and over like in this case right here Matthew chapter 27 he trusted in God let him deliver him now if he will have him for he said I am the son of God well that's kind of interesting right and then uh let's look over here at Luke. Yes. Uh, all right mm -hmm. Luke chapter 1 verse 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God wow. for some reason in the New Testament and I can show you many of these and I will in the private video or a different video I'll do on this it's over and over and over and over and actually that's going to be on patreon by the way for those of you who want to catch that video there he the New Testament talks about son of God but they don't apply it to Israel for some reason it's never a Jewish guy well oddly, it's always Jesus yeah. and with a capitalized S and G right. is the son of God the Christ right and it has nothing to do with Israel right well it's not a strange thing because if you look here and this is in the Dead Sea Scrolls now it's written with a Hebrew font as you guys can see here but this is actually Aramaic and that was done back in the Dead Sea Scrolls it's not like they were writing Aramaic scroll uh, script they were writing Hebrew script but using the Aramaic language so they used the word in this case here bar which means son the bar elion all right the son of God or the son of the most high all right so they're saying right here in 4q 248 he will be called the son of God and they will call him son of the most high Wow, and he's equating that to, to Jewish the Messiah. Man, to and the, yeah, in the Qumran scrolls, they, they were putting this to the Messiah, but yet Shapira does it the other way around. Yeah, he, he says actually ultimate blasphemy in this video here is at the uh, point of 1612, minute mark 1612. Let's hear it again. Okay. It's right here, right okay. there. Please understand that any attempt to diminish the law oh no no, no the that's anti-semitism okay I, which i want to talk about it's just a little bit when he says it's one and the same the jewish man and the messiah is right. one and the same and i do want as we as we do that i just quickly want to just give them a little bit because if we leave them on this video oh, okay. here about this part about this jewish man is nothing to do with jesus that's going to cause a lot of confusion. So I do need to address that just briefly. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Address this and then we'll come back to that. All right. He's taking you, and I'm, I wanted you to be able to see this on the screen here for you guys that are, that are looking at this now. Uh, you guys are watching the screen. And he's taking when you come down here. And, I, and I, I had to do this to make it a little bit simpler for you. Then I mean, if we, could, we went over here to Zechariah. Uh, and we get right in here, they take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. You have to understand, Yixon Shapira has done this video because he's trying to find a way to refute what I'm saying and teaching you guys because he's afraid. It's really causing him a lot of problems. All right, but right here is where it says that. Vihizigu vikanath ish Yehudi. And there's a lot more I'm going to go into about this later because it's not specifically Sitzit. That's a singular right there. It's not Kanafe which is plural and I'll show you in the next video on that very much in detail but here's the main thing you need to see he's talking about the subject verb relationship there and so therefore it's got to be the in ham has to refer to Israel as a plural so he's trying to take and make a plural out of this right here the Jewish man ish Yehudi but let me sum it up for you very simply when God is speaking here and it says, Kaumel Yehovah Sabaoth, okay, and God of armies speaks here, and then he gives all this information. You will notice that he's doing, if you look right here, 3MP, third person, masculine, plural, all the way down to even when they take a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, third person, common, plural, and then taking hold of the skirt of the Jew. So he's first addressing this from a third person aspect about them taking a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, that, that Jewish man, 
right? Then after that, it switches over to first person uh, uh, and then uh, from first person plural and first person in the feminine, then it goes into even the second person. So it's a completely different issue. And when I do that video privately, I'll really explain and break it down and I'll show you each step by step where that was fulfilled in the book of Acts. So I think that's enough to at least give you a little bit of idea. What he's saying there is not correct. So basically, let's sum it up, Steve, when it speaks that, that prophecy, they will get a hold of a wing of a Judean man, which refers to Christ, yes. that was right there physically. Yes. And then they will say, we go with you because we heard God is with you. That's 120 it, in the upper room. It refers room. to the 120 in the upper room who yes. had Christ and, and uh, all the others that 3,000 souls were added that day. Well, that's interesting too, because yes, it was about 3,000, it doesn't say 3,000, but about 3,000 souls were added, and they were both house of Israel and their proselytes, which were Gentiles. So we had Jew and Gentile there that day that were added into part of the kingdom there. And mm -hmm. this is one thing a lot of people miss, the proselytes were converts. Right. And they wow. weren't Jews. Okay, so let's go. Now, I think it's 1556 when he says Messiah and okay. 1556 believers and one could argue without any problem since Yeshua is the master and he live inside the heart of a Jewish believer that it's also applied to the Messiah of Israel because they are one in the same. Wow, that's the that's Isn't the understand? ultimate. They are one and the same. So basically, Shapira as a Jewish man is one and the same as the Messiah. So you have to get a hold of his tzitzit in order to be saved. That's what he's yeah. preaching because he's actually saying in other videos, salvation is not complete for anyone. That's exactly right. Right. That's, that's what exactly, he says. That's what he says. That, that's, that's totally false. Totally false. So this is Gentiles, the, you have no salvation according to the doctrine of, doctrine of Shapira. Right. Until what? The house of Israel comes in. That's what he said to him. The right. house of Israel had to come in. But yet we can prove scripturally the house of Israel already came in. Came in. That's wow. right. And salvation is complete in Christ. Okay. Now um, he's going on into accusing that if you do not believe in Judaism, and his doctrine, you are anti Semite, which is totally pitiful. That means that you have to agree with what he says as a Jewish man, and if you don't, you anti-Semite. Can you believe this? Yeah. Well, Steve, what was that one? Lady you have to used agree to about that. You have to agree to his religion or to Judaism because he's actually defending and teaching Judaism, which I'll prove to you very soon. But um, if you disagree with Judaism, you are anti-Semite. Let's hear him. But any attempt to diminish the role of the Jews in the last days is nothing short of anti-Semitism. It is Paul who says in Romans chapter 9, verse 1 through 5, that the prophet, that the covenants and the promises and the work all belong to the Jewish people. And here we see in the text the ultimate calling of the Jews. The fulfillment of the promise that God is given Israel in the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. The Lord says, and I quote, And you will be to me, Mamlechet Kohanim, Vegoi Kadosh, Vele Advarim Asher Tedaber, Ebnei Israel. Israel is called to be a nation of priests. What is the job of the priests? The job of the priests is to be a mediator between God and the people. And here we see a picture of Israel being like the high priest. Okay, Israel meaning physical Jews are high priests according to Shapira's uh, theology. And of course it's accepted, it builds his church and builds his invited to other as a prophecy expert to other churches which are Christian, you know, 
Yeah. We have friends who yeah. invite him as well. Yeah. So that is spreading, Stephen. This kind of doctrine is spreading now very much. And this like is... Like wildfire. Exactly. Now, when he's saying that Exodus 19, 5 and 6, you will be to me a holy nation, nation of priests. This is what Apostle Peter has almost word for word quoted this verse to mixed audience of Jews and Gentiles in Christ. Let's hear it. Yes, he says here in 2 Peter, verse 9 and 10. Isn't it 1 Peter? Sorry. Uh, excuse me, you're right. 1 Peter, chapter 2. Uh, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but have obtained mercy. This is the Gentile. This is he, exactly. Apostle Peter, a Judean, is quoting Exodus and applying it to Gentile believers. Exactly. And this is what... To totally contrary to Shapiro. Well, yeah, because he's only quoting Exodus and applying it to today's Jews. As, as there. And then he goes into blasphemy, saying that they are the mediator. They have a role of a mediator between God and the nations, meaning Gentiles. So he takes himself, his race, which is supremacism, it's racism, ultimate racism. And he says, my race is the mediator race between you Gentiles and God. This is the ultimate heresy, Steve. That's new. Not okay, so. exactly. And, and let's go and prove it right now in Hebrews 1, 1. No, it's actually 1 Timothy 2, 5. Who is the mediator? 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, men, the man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom. Say Yeshua, you deem. Who gave himself a ransom for all. That's right. Okay, so here we go. There is one mediator, Christ Jesus. It's not physical Jew that is in the role of a mediator. This no. is a false gospel, okay? This, that's Catholicism. He is, he is preaching the, uh, a, a Catholic doctrine. Well, yeah, because they have because a pope they, as a mediator. They, and not only the so, pope, but they believe that the priest goes and sits in the little booth. You confess your sins to that little old man and he'll absolve you of your sins or you might end up in a pedophile corner. You never exactly. Know. Well, we know that Catholicism is Pharisaism. In the, it's a Gentile face of Judaism. But here we go. Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. How Hebrews does God 1, speak to 1. us now in these days? All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I I thought had we it had there. it. Yeah. That's okay. I got it's a okay. million in here. Mm -hmm. You work with Yanka, you will have more screens open than you could ever imagine. God, who at sundry times in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Wow, there's that Son again whom he hath appointed heir over all things, by whom also he made the world. Okay. So oh, wow. Who being the brightness of his glory and the Adult. express image of his person. He's appointed. He's the only one who is a heir of all things. Not the Jews, not the Jewish men, but it's Jesus Christ. That's how God talks to all men. But again, in Judaism, Gentiles are not considered men. Didn't Doreen Dotan teach, though, that the Jews created the world? I don't know. I'm just yes. Asking. Well, that's where we're going to go next. Because it um, sounds more like Talmudic thinking. And unfortunately, Shapiro has not gotten away from the Talmud. Well, we thinking. know that he quotes Talmud, and he quotes Ramchal, and he quotes Maimonides, and he quotes all the sages. And that's what he's bringing and constantly quoting. So we know he teaches Judaism. He was brought up in Judaism, never got rid of it. Okay. Instead, he brought it in. And now that's what he's spreading. And Jonathan and Kahn is doing the same thing. That's right. Be careful, friends. Seriously. We haven't had a chance yet to get Deanne Loper on to talk about that. But we that's need to do that she soon. discovered. Zohar, which I have the Zohar on the shelf behind me here. This but anyway, let's keep moving with, with our stuff because we have so much still. Um, okay. That blasphemy when he said that Jewish men or Jewish race and Messiah is one and the same. Right. This is not just Shapira. This is actual Jewish doctrine. Now, when we go to Dorindo Tan, 
uh, she more. is a wife of just a minute Stephen I have um, I have all of her marks I didn't mark it to start it off with nothing to see. just a minute give us a minute I'm sorry um, okay here we go okay yes I have markings 845 that's where we're gonna start go ahead and keep but uh, what what he just told you that the Jewish man and Messiah is one and the same. He's not just making this up out of his own head. That's what he has been taught in Judaism. We know that uh, Zohar, Talmud, Kabbalah, the entire Jewish writings, that's what they teach. They teach that Jewish people themselves are ultimately their Messiah, the Messiah for the Gentiles. And this is Dorin Dotan is a wife of a rabbi. She lives in Israel and she is a, a Torah teacher. She studies Torah extremely deeply. She teaches gematria on her channel. Yeah, she studies Torah as, as well as any rabbi would, even deeper as any man, I can say. So if you want to know what Judaism teaches, Doreen Dotan is a very good source for you. But let's find out what Judaism teaches about who Jews are, okay? 8.45 till 9.30. The human form that God comes down into in order to create humanity, in order to create the entire creation, is the Jews. We are what you think Jesus is. The Jews are God in a meat suit. It is not one person, it is not one figure, it is all of us in our many numbers in every generation. That's pretty good. I think so, it's cute the way she says the word mitzut because mitzut is, to, she makes it sound mitzut. like what it is, a meat suit. <laughs> yeah, a God flesh, in flesh. Meat suit. Now how is it different from Shapira's teaching, right? Basically he's bringing no you, different. he's bringing you same doctrine and he, he, he says oh, he's your brother you know. and now he's just bringing it to the among the Christians now and he's building yeshivas all over the all over the world okay you know and what it sounds like and I hate to say it but what it really sounds like that concerns me that sounds exactly what Adam and Eve were dealing with in the Garden of Eden the serpent came in and he quoted to Eve the word Eve quoted back to him but he just twisted it a little bit and, right. and I hate to say this because I really was hoping that maybe some of the things we were saying would change Shapira. And maybe there is possibility still yet, but it's getting awfully dangerous. Right, really, it really does. It's getting way too serious now. But anyway, let's go to 1221. You will go until 1326. It's important what I'm saying because the reason why most Jews do not know that they are God incarnate is precisely because up until now the world could not have withstood that realization. God's knowing and God's being are one and the same and up until now if a Jew came into the world with full God knowledge the world couldn't have sustained it. So most Jews come into the world and immediately upon being born into the world forget who they are and they think that, that they're, they're just human beings. The fact that we're starting to come out of our amnesia means that the world can, can handle that and, and, and not be obliterated which means that we succeeded. Wow, turn it off, yeah, turn it off. Well, I guess Mr. Shapira came out of his amnesia <laughs> because he says that are the same as the Messiah. Okay, yeah. let's go to 1401 till 1427. 1421? 1401, 14, or 14, yeah. Okay. 01. That one second, I'm not <laughs> We'll have to go to 1357 then. All right, here we go. In the meat suit we go. That's very now. short. Also the word gave v, which means my body. 
Before a Jew comes into this world in the womb, a Jew is taught the entire Torah. Within the womb, God, God learns the entire Torah, takes on the entire Torah. It becomes a shield that protects the creation from God coming in, and it is also the information that is going to build the body. Okay, so uh, at you didn't seven. Know I knew the Torah when I was born, <laughs> did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. Now, in 1735, that's the point about the Hebrew, what Shapira was teaching you, basically. And she's not believer in Messiah Yeshua. No, she's as not. Shapira is. My point is to show you that she, he's teaching you basic Judaism. Exactly. That's what he's teaching you, okay? She's an uh, example of that. 1735. Who learns Torah? In Hebrew, Hebrew is Ivrit, which is Anochi, am, I am mother. It is also Sod, Brit, the secret of the covenant. It is also Ubal Kadosh, the holy inception. So here we go. That's about, that's what Shapira teaches Hebrew, fulfillment of Zephaniah, one holy pure language. That's what they're learning in Judaism. That's what they believe, okay? Now let's go to, um, uh, well, there is a lot of stuff. Um, she will speak about how Jews set stars in motion, how Jews keep this universe together. Let's go to 2002 for the sake of time. Wow, so the Jews are the creator. Yes, they're the creator. Shapiro just hasn't been brave enough to tell you guys that one yet bring you all into existence still was not nullified because when all is said and done a Jew remains God in a body and so so she will teach you also that it was rabbis who brought Gentiles into existence so they're the creators basically they're the God in flesh this is how messed up Judaism is to really and and what's really messed up Steve is that this is what Shapira is basically bringing to the church. We are the God. We are the mediator. We are the Messiah. This is why they a have Messiah to is God, right? Divinity of Jesus Christ, because they can have Him divine and over them. No, they believe they're gods in flesh. Yeah, you know they're the same. But yeah, that's they, that's okay. really weird. Okay. But anyway, uh, again, oh, I'm sorry. Let's keep moving. Uh, we did, okay, yes, 2112. Let's see what she says there. 2112. As Mashiach, we are brigaded their position as Mashiach. We are Mashiach. They did not want to be Hamashiach. They didn't want to shoulder that kind of responsibility. So they went into denial and they said, oh, the Mashiach will be someone else, sometime else, somewhere else. That is the rabbis who didn't know what they were. The truth of the matter is, is that it is we who died for you, not the other way around. That's right. Get it straight. Okay. <laughs> she's got she's bold and she, she's only that's teaching. right get it straight she's and don't only, listen yeah. if you try to go there especially if you're a gentile and you try to go there as a christian to her channel to correct her she's going to give you a good piece of her mind well uh point is hmm. same as shapira they are the messiah same yeah. one and the same and this is a classic judaism Classic Judaism teaches separation of Gentiles and Jews, Jews being divine sparks. That's from their Kabbalah mystic right. teachings. God has filled the Sephirot tree with the ten vessels with light, but the vessels were small, so the vessels shattered. Light, the sparks of light have come down to the reality we are here now, and all of these little sparks are Jews, basically. It's a divinity of Jews. That's what they believe, that's what they teach. Right. They, they uh, prohibit intermarriage with Gentiles because they teach that Gentiles are not human beings, but they are on animalistic levels. If you go to our previous chat, I have brought in 
uh, uh, examples of rabbis saying exactly the same thing, that the Gentiles and Jews are two different species. I, I think I sent you a video about Deresh Hashem by uh, Rabbi Steve at one little point there at 12.49, he will separate yes, yes, no no one more maybe yes that one go to 12 this is the video where he says the origin of jews and non-jews the whole video 48? is 1249 i played here let go there remember what the ramchal says is very interesting <clears throat> you know he says that the difference between a jew and a non-jew is that even though they look the same in the sense that they're humans, but they are two different species of humans. Uh, it's almost like, you know, they, they conjecture that a man used to have the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, if you know that, you know. So we are animals, the Gentiles are animals. And I say we because they don't believe I am Jewish because of how, my so mother. did I marry a half? Yeah, but you know, I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't want to identify, I identify I with that. Christ, Jesus, not with some religion of Judaism, okay, but, well, that, that that's, well, you know, they're actually, it's like he's starting to speak, it's Neanderthals, Neanderthals, remember from evolution, he's yeah, using evolution, here's, here's Neanderthals, the to only, the compare only, Gentiles to. The only truth that could ever even be remotely brought into these type things here was when there was with the fallen angels. And that wasn't Neanderthal, but it was a mixing, mixing of the fallen angels with the humankind. That's the only mixing that we have. We don't have, even in the Jewish people, you don't have, you know, animal and humanoid. You know, all well, the people of course, the Steve, but this is their messed up Judaism I know, I know doctrine. That. They even, you know, they're supposed to believe in creation, yet he's using here evolution example to say that Neanderthals are Gentiles. I know. Can you I believe understand. this? I mean, and they're up, he's quoting Ramchal, which is, I believe, Italian rabbi from a long time ago, which is very strange because um, uh, Yitzhak Shapira recently, he was in Paris in, during Hanukkah, he gave a talk, and in Paris he was quoting Ramchal, the same sage as this one. And Ramchal teaches what? Well, Ramchal teaches that Jews and Gentiles are like different species, you know, like the Gentiles are Neanderthals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, so here I we go. Know. So this is why I am so, um, I, I wouldn't say angry, but I want to warn Concern. the body of Christ. I'm really concerned that this kind of wolves have entered among the, the Christian believers. sheep, the believers right. in Jesus Christ, okay? And then there are actually men who allow them in. This is uh, my concern. But, okay, Stephen, um, let's go back to Tzitzit video of Shapira. I have um, over here a marking where I would like, uh, Mr. Shapira has done a mathematics, Okay, he's done, yes, where he will specifically say, he'll do a math, it's still on the scripture of Zechariah to hold the tzitzit of a Jew. Right. And he says that one Jew is going to have 2,800 Gentiles, meaning there is 2,800 Gentiles per one Jew. Where did this come from? Where did this math come from? Do you think it came from Shapira? It came from Bible? Is it in Tanakh that one racial Jew is going to have 2,800 Gentiles? Why did he say this? Where did it come from? Okay, let's first hear him. It's important. Why? Because a Jew wears 10 or 4, I should say, 4 garments, 4 tzitzit, 4 corners. To a tzitzit, a gentile turn hold it. That's forty around the Jew, but there are seventeen nations. So if you do the math, four times ten times the seventeen nations, you get the number twenty-eight hundred. The ratio of a Jew to a non-Jew believers in the world will be one Jew to twenty-eight hundred from the nations. Now. It says in the <laughs> Now, Steve, this is what got me because when I was studying Judaism and I was giving uh, speeches 
last year uh, in the United States in various cities, I was giving speeches and I brought up my PowerPoint research where I very much in detail show the teaching of the Jewish law halakha on Gentiles. And in there I showed a video of a Jewish rabbi who was specifically mentioning that it is a teaching in a Zohar or it, it is a teaching uh, within Judaism that when Messiah returns uh, the Gentiles will be slaves of Jews and there will be specifically 2,800 Gentiles per one Jew. Now that is very concerning that Yitzhak Shapira has brought this subject up and where this is coming from because it comes from certain uh, commentator on a Talmud soon we can show the name but it's also a teaching in Zohar okay that's exactly right so yeah. and and that's something that when you talk casually to Jews they will not some of them don't even know about this it's really in circuits like kind of like more elite circles kind of like more among uh, rabbis who deeply study Zohar, Kabbalah, Talmud, that's their teachings in private, you know? So not many regular or, or secular Jews even know this teaching. So for me to hear it out of Shapira's mouth tells me that this is something he had heard within his Judaic teachings while he studied uh, in Judaism, Talmud, Zohar, Kabbalah. And here we go, here is this Jew speaking the same we can watch the whole yeah. thing before i play that i will say if you look this up on the internet there are a lot of apologists who say these things are not there uh and there is one i think there's one book in question that was quoted that was sourced that's not actually part of a talmudic book i do know that that's a fact but the zohar does say it and it is in the zohar well i'm not sure steve if that's really true that it's not part of talmud or it's just not printed for the Gentiles to see, and it is in their Hebrew and Aramaic versions, somewhere right. in elite uh, synagogues in Israel or within the world itself, because we can see that this teaching is there. Yes, I mean, it is there. I would not even believe it until I heard Shapira say this to the Christians now. And notice how he says it. And the that. number 2,800, and he, he tells says you the, one Jew equals 2800 gentiles he doesn't even he doesn't even at that point he's not even saying oh 2800 gentiles are taken to the hold of the skirt of one jew that's what he means he that, is yeah. applying it i know he's i know that's the way he's kind of going with it but the way he verbalizes it it is like slavery well yes well let's let's see maybe i can show you some video here later yeah, but let's, let's just play let's this. watch this one here and uh you can see it for yourself on the screen what what he says in hebrew but it's transcribed into english listen up okay <laughs> I just want to pause it for a second because as I'm listening to it, he is saying exactly the way they're transcribing this, okay? So when he says Adam is, he's, he's like, he's not like the, the, the Be'ama, which is the beast. Okay. Okay. Okay, but 
יהודי לא יהרוג יהודי, אפילו שלא לא רואים אותה. אם אחד גוי, כן? אבל יש יהודים שהורגים יהודים. זה קושי. יגאל עמיר, אבי פופר. יהודי שמתנהג כמו יהודי, ודאי יש יהודים שלא מתנהגים. אוקיי, אבל רגע, מה שאני לא מבין, זה כל הגויים הם ב... איך קוראים? תקשיב שנייה, אדוני. בהמות. אני יכול להגיד לך משהו? אם יש להם, אם אין להם ציווי. אדם, שנייה, אדם זה על שם אדם אל העליון. אדם זה כביכול אדם אל אלוקים. אוקיי? זה פירוש אדם. אנחנו הפכנו את זה, זאת אומרת, העם הפך את זה. אתה אדם, בן אדם, כמובן, אתה בן אדם, אתה צריך להתנהג כמו בן אדם. אבל בעיקרון זה על שם עליון. אדם זה אדם אל העליון, וכיוון שאנחנו פנים של אלוקים, אז הוא קרא לנו בני אדם. ועכשיו, הגויים מה שהם, כן? אלוקים עשה אותם בשביל שיעשו פה... בשביל ש... בשביל ל... 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 לשרת את היהודים. כל הגויים שאתה רואה ש... שיש בעולם, מהמיליארדים האלה, mm-hmm. הם הכל רק בשביל... שהיהודים יהיה להם איזה תועלת. עכשיו, היות ואנחנו בגלות... אנחנו לא יודעים בדיוק. שנייה, היות ואנחנו בגלות, אז אוטומטי עדיין הם עוד לא משרתים אותנו לגמרי, רק חלקית. כל אחד יהיה... אוקיי, כשמשיח יבוא, אז כל אחד יהיה לו... יהיה לו אלפים עבדים. בינתיים, המשיח לא... Said that. 2000, go back, do it again a little bit. שיש בעולם מהמיליארדים האלה, הם הכל רק בשביל שהיהודים יהיה להם איזה תועלת. עכשיו, היות ואנחנו בגלות, היות ואנחנו בגלות, אז אוטומטי עדיין הם עוד לא משרתים אותנו לגמרי, רק חלקית. כל אחד יהיה לו, כשמשיח יבוא, אז כל אחד יהיה לו... יהיה לו אלפים עבדים. I can see where we're at though now. Let me just try to put it right on that. Here it is. 2,800 slaves. 2,800 slaves. Isn't that interesting that Shapira is doing his math and doing the same number? So where did it come from, Steve, right? This is what they teach in Judaism. When Messiah arrives, eventually every Jew will have 2,800 Gentile slaves. One thing you have to understand, too, because as I was listening to it in Hebrew, you're seeing one thing uh, in English a little different. But he consistently says that the Jews are direct descendants of Adam, is what he's actually saying. Not just the fact that they're human, but he's saying that they're from Adam. Well, it is the teaching in, uh, I think, Kabbalah or Zohar, that non-Jews are uh, not considered Adam. Exactly. And that's what they're saying there. They're right. saying that. They're basically, they're saying that the Goim, or Canaanite race, or Cain's race, and that they are Adam's race, is what mm-hmm. they're saying. Right. So, this number, 2,800, Steve, if you go to some of the videos that I have sent you, okay. just a few more things I wanted to show. Uh, not this one. Uh, yeah, this one here, that's the same person, Corey, where he's... Uh, basically interviewing Jewish various Jewish people and if you you can leave a link to people but uh, when you watch this video you will see some of these secular Jews who say no we don't know about Gentile being slaves as I said this is a specific teaching among these Jewish rabbis that is coming kind of out like like mm-hmm. Doreen said they're coming out of amnesia they remember their gods in uh, flesh and now their teachings are coming to be more known what is again I'm repeating myself, strange thing that Shapira is teaching that. Exactly yes. same thing. Exactly. Okay, which is a supremacism, which is a racism. And then he has guts to call other people anti-Semites if you don't agree with him. So it's like forced slavery. You either believe his uh, Judaistic beliefs or you anti-Semite. Now, uh, this is not saying 2800, which I want to sh- show one source, Jewish source, but Um, This is just saying that uh, he's interviewing a Jewish rabbi who basically is saying it's true that Gentiles will be slaves of the Messiah. Where did he start it at? I believe the beginning. He's not talking though? He will start. Okay. 
But can you, okay, so, no, because I've heard other things, other religious groups, not you guys, um, who will say things like, when the Messiah comes, um, that non-Jews will end up being like slaves to Jews and things like that. Is that part of, like, where does that come from? That's that, what, what you're saying is correct. What you're saying is correct. And what does it mean? But that's only when all the Jewish people around the world and here are acting like proper Jews. Okay. And none of the Jews around here are acting like proper Jews. So that's that's not... Oh, that. And also, what does it mean that they'll be slaves? Uh, like, if, what does that if, mean? If all oh, the, where, first of all, where does it come from? Where does that idea come from? I explained to you. Okay. It says, if all the Jews around the world, which is 6 million or 8 million Jews around the world, are acting like good Jews, that praying three times a day, the women cover their hair, they go, they go, they, they're very, they're not making any uh, sins, they're not doing any sins, that, you know, then, then it's a different, then we're acting like a chosen people, so then God says, you're acting like chosen people, so the other people, the rest of the people will serve you, but if, if the Jewish people are acting like, like nowhere near, then all the people act like proper people. Hebrew? Well, this is all the bracha. Yeah. This whole, you have to see the beginning of the bracha in the pasuk. Yeah. That's if you if you do such and such, keep the Torah, then be in the And then afterwards, if you don't keep the Torah, it continues on. That you know, that, uh, this is just the bracha. It says here, Kashem Akira Berechacha, Kashad Vavata Goim Rabim, you'll lend to the Goim. Okay, I don't know the word. Vavata to Goim Rabim, Lind. Vata Lotavod, and you won't borrow. You'll lend them the money. Mashalta Bagoim Rabim, you rule over the Goim, or the Chalim Shalu. Okay, we can give this video link to people, Steve, but uh, if you go to another uh, link I sent you with the source, Jewish sources. Just a link? Uh, yeah, just a, a link. It's not a video. Okay. okay, right here. Okay, if we read all of that, if you can move. That's from Simeon Hadarsan. This is the one that they kind of say it doesn't... Uh, you know, the Talmud apology says it's not in Talmud, yet, right. yet, we just heard them speaking of Gentiles being slaves and specifically mentioning 2,800 slaves and, and so on. So right. the problem is that in Talmud, there is a teaching that you cannot tell the truth to Goyim. You cannot tell right. them what, uh, the, know that. what the sure that. Torah and what they mean by Torah is Talmud, Kabbalah right. and Zohar and all of the sages writings together, even Tanya in the Chabad organizations. This is all considered Torah to them. Right. And they have a teaching that you do not teach Goyim the truth. You don't tell them the truth. You need to deny when you are asked because we are not, the Jews are not to say to Goyim the truth in their teachings. Right. So we know that this is all allowed. But here we go. These are some of the, you know, they say this is from anti-Semites, yet it's not anti-Semites because we see now Shapira saying the number 2,800 per one Jew. Now you tell me, explain to me, Stephen, is this ultimate racism is this how does that differ from true christianity from faith that jesus came to give us from the gospel that apostles preached where uh, apostle paul said that there is neither jew nor greek okay oh i'm sorry did we actually read this go back read what the what, the source my brain, no, no good, my brain. When the Messiah comes, every Jew will have 2,800 slaves. This is from Simeon Hadarsan. Uh, and I was doing some research on this, just to let you know, since they're purging a lot of videos from the internet, when you do a Google search, you cannot find a lot of things anymore. Like on vaccines, like on, right. yes, on Talmud and all of that, you just can't find anything anymore because they're purging internet from truth. Okay, but Simeon Hadarsan was actually, there was a writing of a Talmud commentator who lived 700 years after Talmud was published. 
and he's the one who has commented on Talmudic writing and then he said that when the Messiah comes every Jew will have 2,800 slaves and since it is considered their sage the, the writings of sages Talmud. is Just considered like Talmudic Rashi teaching, or, like Rashi, uh, Ramchal, uh, Maimonides, right, which right. is Rambam, and so on. So there we go. That surprised me to hear this from Shapira. That actually made me very angry because he's bringing some supremacy, racism, supremacist and um, teachings and racism into exactly. the body of Christ. Exactly. What is really sad is that a lot of people who listen to him just take it and they don't think for themselves. Now, what is the true gospel? Neither Jew nor Greek, right? That's right. Nor slave we're, nor free. We're all one in Christ. No male or yes. female, we are all one in Christ. By adoption, people who were not called people of God are now people now, of God. All the people of God, that's right? exactly right. We are all ambassadors for Christ. The Jew and Gentile, there is no difference. And this is the true, real gospel that Shapira has not embraced and therefore he cannot be called our brother, rather a wolf who is bringing false doctrines into the body of Christ. That's exactly right. Unfortunately so. Well, for me, this is all I have prepared for today, Steve. I well, funny I to it's warn kind of people. people, you guys, but it's important that you get this information. I was just sharing with the people the other night when I was doing a short broadcast. I said, you have no idea every day if we go through just our regular things in life, it seems to be a monotonous life. You know, you wake up, you eat, you, you, you go to work, you put your kids in school, whatever you may do, you go that, you get home at night, and it just seems like the same old, same old every yeah. day. But when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's an ever unfolding revelation of who he is. That's one thing that's never monotonous. It never gets old. And when you, when your job is to truly serve the king, as the scripture said, our God reigneth and Jesus Christ is our God. He reigns even now. And that's where the pleasure is. That's where it's never monotonous. And of course, we are seeking the kingdom that, you know, he, he brought the kingdom to us, but we are seeking to leave this world. I don't want anything to do with the kingdom they're building. And that's something right. I noticed that if we're, if we put our treasures, if you know, as the Bible says, where your heart is, there your treasures will be also. If we have our heart in a Talmudic type of doctrine like Shapira is bringing, you're going to stay right here. Right. Exactly. And, and believe me. And it's reserved for, for fire. That's right. Yeah. Because when Christ returns, this heaven and earth will pass away with a great noise, with a fervent heat. This is Elements where hell will is melt. That's right. That's where right. hell is going to be. Exactly. You're, you're sitting on yep. the pot of hell. Just wait for it to explode and everything to blow up and stuff. I don't want to be here. I want to be like Jesus said. He said, "Where I, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you can be with me." That's where I want to exactly. be. Exactly. Now, by the way, here, Steve, on, on, on uh, this particular website, they are citing Shulchan Aruch from uh, uh, Hosen Hamichpat. And these are very truthful passages. I have shown these passages on, uh, with, in a real, I took a real Shulchan Aruch to one of our and conferences. Right we have shelf. it here. I just didn't see it. I'm seeing it right now. Uh, I would otherwise prepare it from our Shulchan Aruch. But these are really in there, in their uh, teaching. And Shulchan Aruch is uh, considered a code of Jewish law. So let's read this. It says, when a Jew has a Gentile in his clutches, another Jew may go to the same Gentile, lend him money, and in turn deceive him, so that a Gentile shall be ruined. For the property of a Gentile, according to our law, belongs to no one, and the first Jew that passes has full right to seize it. And that's truly in there. I yes, had it, it highlighted yeah. and I brought it as an example to, to, for yes. people to read it. Now, another one that the Jewish nation is the only nation selected by God while all the remaining ones are contempt, uh, contemptible and hateful, that all property of other nations belong to the Jewish nation, which consequently is entitled to seize upon it without any scruples. An Orthodox Jew is not bound to observe principles of morality toward people of other tribes. He may act contrary to morality if profitable to himself or to Jews in general. A Jew may rob a goy. He may 
cheat him over a bill which should not be perceived by him otherwise the name of God would become dishonored okay so these are the That's what um, is talking about and yes we had yes. the conference there we have, of course this is just one of as you can see many full, full and this is code of their Jewish law so this is very dangerous doctrines that uh, false Pharisees brought in and this is what why Jesus was so angry with the Pharisees and called them vipers and uh, seed of uh, vipers and snakes mm -hmm. and exactly hypocrites. Right. Okay, well, I think we are truly done now, Steve. For yes. The... So thank you for watching. Yes. And if you'd like to support the work we're doing, we certainly could use your help. Uh, you can visit our website, israelinewslive.org. Also, on the back of the computer screen here, right here, is our address. Oh, Steve, you didn't you cover actually, uh, the dragon. That's not a dragon on there. No? Nope, this is Asus. Totally oh, different sorry. computer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we didn't. I didn't know that the other one came that way because I ordered on. on I know and people made comments so, that Steve, you have a dragon on your computer. Yeah, <laughs> I actually I covered it because yeah, I didn't like that either, and it really disappointed me. Unfortunately, I just thought saw MSI online. Didn't know that they had a little emblem in there as well. But anyway, so on the back of the screen on this computer here, you can actually see our address there. You can write to us, and uh, if you want to support, you can support by mail. Stephen Bennoon. Uh, you could make your donation out to, and we really appreciate it. And thank you, and God bless you for your time. Shalom. Shalom.